Yeah, what's up? I'm back again with part four to these videos about effective communication. Because I want to improve the situation in each and every nation. In each and every nation. I do not own the copyrights to this music, but I'm going to use it and not abuse it. Uh. Get on beat. You're going to bob your head or dance. Get on beat. And move your feet. Because I have a treat. Yeah. Ooh, I must share this right here. This is so important. I should have put this on every one of my videos. But hear this right here. Hear it. The single. Somebody say single. No, I'm not talking about your relationship status. <laughs> That's mine. Yeah. But oh well. The single greatest obstacle to effective and persuasive, not manipulative, persuasive communicating is our, that includes me, our failure to understand our listener. Repeat, the single greatest obstacle to effective and persuasive, not manipulative, but persuasive communicating is our failure to understand our, our listener. Boy, that's so good. So good. We should be able to freely share how we feel without fear of being belittled, ignored, interrupted, or misjudged. Repeat. Come on. Tell it. We should be able to freely share how we feel without, somebody say without, without fear of being belittled, ignored, interrupted, or misjudged. Yeah. Did we get that? There was times when I had some conversations with some people in my life and I'd be like, man, I don't even know why I'm about to talk to them because they're going to ignore me. They're going to misunderstand me. They're going to take my words and twist my words and then use my words back against me to try and show me how dominant they are over me. Oh yeah, I could tell by their body language and the words that they, my words that they manipulated, twisted, and used back at me. And plus I you know, I kind of knew this person so I knew that's exactly what they were going to do. They were going to use my words to misunderstand me, belittle me, misjudge me and yes, they did interrupt me whenever I was trying to talk to them. They would cut me off and I'd be like, shoot, forget it. I won't even say nothing else. This person is not listening. I've been like that, you know, where I wasn't listening. I would just cut people off. But um, glory to the most high. I've gotten better. I've really gotten better at just being patient and being quiet and listening to what the person has to say. I mean, really listening and listening to understand not me listening to reply. You know what I'm saying? I've gotten better at that. And I still have a lot of work to do, but I have gotten better. You know, sometimes people don't want to hear what you have to say. They want you to hear what they have to say. You know, people just, a lot of times people just want somebody who will listen. They don't need your preaching. They don't need your advice. They don't need your counseling. They don't need your good advice. They just need a listening ear. And I want to say this to y'all. 
just really watch out with who you vent to because if they don't truly love you, they will resent you. Watch out with who you vent to because if they don't truly love you and respect you, they will resent you. Let us be the type of people who will allow people to express themselves. Now, I'm not saying let people disrespect you, but let's be the type of people who will allow others to express themselves freely, confidently, and securely without us belittling them, ignoring them, interrupting them, or misjudging them. Let's be those type of people. Needless to say, I had to let that person go that, um, you know, whenever we would talk and I own my feelings, I own them. I'm responsible for my feelings, but I let that person go that, um, you know, had me feeling like I was belittled, ignored, interrupted and misjudged. I let that person go. Bless them. I pray the best for them and their family. The benefit will be a deeper level of intimacy in all of our relationships. Whenever we practice everything I taught on these four videos, the benefit will be, listen, the benefit will be a deeper level of intimacy in all our relationships. You hear that? And that's what we should really want. We should want to be intimate with the people we're in a relationship with. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships or marriage. And I'm not talking about which if you're married to the opposite sex, that's cool. If you use your words, not in a manipulative way, but you use your words to um, get your spouse in the mood for physical intimate sex but that's not what I'm really talking about I'm talking about us effectively communicating so that we can be closer to the people who are in our lives so that we can be more loving and respectful towards one another because love is what it's all about and in my opinion if you want to know what true love is well look at Yehoshua or the one many call Jesus Christ of course, yes. But check out 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. That sums it up. If you ever have any confusion or misunderstanding about what real love is, true love is, you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. Until next time, check out all my videos on YouTube. I use my videos to overcome evil. I use my videos to help others and bless others. Peace. Where my music at? Not my music. Yeah. Y'all want to hear me flow, don't y'all? I'm not under pressure. Cause when I speak, I'm not trying to feel lesser And when I meet my wife, I'm gonna make sure I bless her We're not gonna get into that, trying to undress her Cause that ain't none of your business, ha. I know you like, what is this? I'm trying to think of something to say Yeah, have a wonderful day have a wonderful day. Party.